चहे नबी मुझ पे भी जरा सजब तलक तू 
जब तलक तू पना दे न दिल की दर्द तेरे न जाए सवाली भर दो झोली मेरी या मोहम्मद लौट कर मैं न जाऊंगा खाली भर दो झोली न बीज भर दो झोली हम सब की भर दो झोली आकाश भर दो झोली न बीज भर दो झोली भर दो झोली मेरी सरकार मदीना लौट कर
It is perhaps in our nature to see life as a series of choices between sharply defined dualities. But in fact, life is more a matter of avoiding false dichotomies, which can lead to dangerous extremes. The truth of the matter is that we can address the dysfunctions of fragmentation without obscuring the values of diversity. A cosmopolitan ethic will also be sensitive to the problem of economic insecurity in our world. It is an enormous contributing factor to the problems I have been discussing. Endemic poverty still corrodes any meaningful sense of opportunity for many millions. And even in less impoverished societies, a rising tide of economic anxiety can make it difficult for fearful people to respect, let alone embrace, that which is new or different. This problem has been compounded by the very advances that have long been the source of so much hope. I'm thinking here, for example, about medical advances that have dramatically increased human longevity. People live longer, but they often find that they have outlived their resources. The developing world is now facing a major challenge. How does it care for the elderly. Even in more developed societies, social changes have eroded some of the domestic support that once eased the burdens of the aging. How, we must all ask, will we manage the new challenges of longevity? All of these considerations will place special obligations on those who play leadership roles in our societies. To me, one of the most important issues for any society in any part of the world is that it should be driven by hope. Uh, the moment that people of any generation, of any age, lose hope, uh, it is a very, very damaging thing for that community, that society. So, uh, creating circumstances of hope is to me very, very important indeed. Welcome to Friday Night Reflection. Kushamadi. Ya Ali Madan. Karibu. Bienvenue. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Akhtar Premji. I'm Nazira Premji. I am Roshan Jina. I'm Amir Jina, Nana of Zara Premji. Yes, exactly. That is my Nana. My name is Zara Premji and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. An absolute privilege to have you here with us as we host from Shea Premji once again right here in Vancouver. But this time, as you can see, I have the honor of hosting with my superheroes. I am so lucky that we have the opportunity to be here today with you talking about the theme of aging gracefully with none other than my perfect examples. We would like to extend a warm welcome to all our Jamaati members. As well as all the multi-faith family members, those of you tuning in from across Canada, as well as around the world. Oh, Za, it's Friday night reflections time. Here's your chai. No more of that moon rock. Thank you. Oh, Za, I got some badam for you. Thank you. I'm watching Friday night reflection every time. I am living now. Doctor, wait for me. The man has just left. We three ladies will host the show. <laughs> yes, we definitely will. And I know my Nana mentioned that he loves Friday Night Reflections. One of his favorite episodes, and I'm sure many of your favorite episodes as well, was where we got to talk about blessings of Jamaat Khanna in our lives. It's pretty good having Jamaat Khanna open, isn't it, Mom? Oh, yes, very much. We were very, very happy. Computer shows us our family six name. And we went to Kane and we enjoyed it. It was peaceful, very happy, and shukar mola. I'm really glad that you enjoyed Kane. I know all of us have as well. 
Uh, my Nana, however, calls me every time to thank me for his allocation. So just so you know, I'm not the computer, but yes, there is a computer choosing you if you have signed up for Jamaat Kana allocation. Anyways, as you can see, I don't have bone broth here with me today. I actually upped my game. I've got the two most important people in my life here hosting with me instead. I've got my 85 year old nanny who is who was born in Eldoret, Kenya, and my mother. You don't do not have to say my age. I will not reveal her age, but she was born in Nairobi, Kenya. I taught you well, Zara. Yes, she did teach me well. My nanny has taught me a lot, a lot of lessons that I've learned over the years that I'm actually hoping we'll be able to start having a bit of a discussion about today as we talk about the aging process. So Nani, I have a very big question for you. What is your secret to living a happy, healthy, active, perfect life? Zara, we don't take time okay, to talk about it, okay? Very good point, <laughs> yes. Um, I'm hoping that at least we can start the conversation and hopefully you can start your conversation at home as well with your loved ones. Yes. And then inshallah, after the show, we can all have this conversation within our own homes about aging gracefully. Well, enough about us. We have a great show to look forward to. We will be inviting President Amir Ali Qasim Laka soon. And to give us a faith-based perspective on planning for the future, we'll be joined a little later in the show by OI's Dr. Kareem Galamali. And we'll also be reflecting on some of the stories that other Jamaati members have about how they have gone through all the different changes as they've gotten older. Well, these changes don't happen just when you get older. They also happen when you're young. Yes, very good point. So it would, of course, be very nice to have someone here to guide us through all of those changes. We're very lucky we're going to have Kahir Lalji, the executive director of United Way, who has, in conjunction with the Jamaati institutions, created a tool that will allow you to help have and facilitate these types of conversations at home. And then, I know, Nani, your favorite part will be coming up. Oh, my favorite part is music. We end this show in a musical expression. Well, let us welcome President for Council for Canada, Amir Ali Qasim Laka. My dear brothers and sisters, Yalimudad. Alhamdulillah, longevity is increasing due to healthier lifestyles and advances in medicine. Over the next 20 years, the number of individuals 65 years of age and older in Canada is expected to grow by 70%. However, public safety nets and government pension schemes are limited in the benefits they provide. The demands on public sector spending in healthcare and caregiving are rising as more individuals collect benefits. The concern is that many seniors experience financial difficulty through income loss life-changing events, healthcare costs, and exhaustion of savings. In addition, seniors often feel lonely and lack companionship. They do not always have access to qualified and sensitive caregivers. Many don't have opportunities to use their time creatively. It is therefore crucial that we undertake appropriate planning while we have the means and capacity to think ahead well in advance of potential issues that may arise, such that we have financial and emotional safeguards for the years of life post-retirement. In the same way that we plan for our education, our careers, and other major life milestones, we must plan for the latter years of our lives. Planning for aging means thinking about the health and social supports we will require to live safely in our homes and communities for as long as possible. The term aging in place refers to our being able to live independently in our existing setup without experiencing significant disruption. What constitutes quality of life as we age? There are many desired outcomes. Sufficient retirement income, meaningful use of time, practice of faith, access to Jamaat Kana, life of dignity, quality leisure activities, positive emotional health, access to quality health care, and contact with loved ones and friends. 
the seniors, the soon-to-be seniors, and caregivers in Ajamat need to be aware of these considerations and the quality of life that we are solving for. The Jamaat will recall that during the Golden Jubilee, Molana Hazrimam identified caring for the elderly as a key priority. This emphasis has continued to this day. It has been a central focus in our institutional programs. It is in this spirit that the Council for Canada has partnered with the United Way to develop an online aging in place tool. I am pleased to announce that this tool is being launched tonight. The objective is to empower members of the Jamaat to take control over the future years of their lives. The tool is a self-directed checklist that encourages personal reflection, dialogue, and the creation of an individual action plan on aging. It is comprised of three components, a self-assessment checklist, a reflection section, and the individual plan. The checklist takes 15 minutes to complete, and it considers health, home environment, financial safety, and transportation factors. We strongly encourage individuals between the ages of 50 and 65 and the caregivers of such individuals to spend time with the tool and engage in discussions with families about future needs. The tool is available on our website. Remember, active aging equals healthy aging. As we age, we need to be proactive with our health remain active, maintain our friendships, our networks, draw strength from the practice of faith, and volunteer to combat dementia, isolation, and loss of self-esteem. Planning for aging allows us to make decisions before we face potential issues. Understanding the realities of aging and anticipating those changes early can enable us to adapt gracefully in an incremental way. The latter years of our lives should be deeply satisfying. Planning early will enable us to optimize the quality of life in later years. So I say to our Jamaat, use our aging in place tool. Plan today for the life you want to live tomorrow. Thank you and Kudafis. Thank you, President, for explaining to us how the institutions are helping us plan for the future. And of course, being active in planning for our life and our future is a big part of our faith and it dates back to our first Imam. Now, of course, to give us some more context and education on this, we're going to welcome a special guest with a faith-based perspective. We welcome Allies Dr. Kareem Galamali. Dr. Galamali is the International Wyazine Training Program Manager with the Institute of Ismaili Studies and has been since 2000. Apart from teaching on the department's educational programs, he is regularly invited to teach specific sessions on the Institute's secondary education program as well as educational programs of ITHRAS. Let's welcome Allies Dr. Kareem Galamali. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Members of the Jamaat, one of the hallmarks of our tradition throughout our illustrious history is our ability to encounter the ups and downs of life and the resilience of our Jamaat to bounce back much better than before. If we study our past, we will very quickly learn of many examples of times of happiness and times of challenges, times of growth, and times of less growth. However, in our history, we will notice a distinctive quality of our Jamaat to bounce back with a sort of inner energy that allowed the Jamaat like a trampoline to revive itself, and most importantly, better than before. These examples are numerous in our history, from the Hijra of the Prophet to Medina, the event at Karbala, Dore Satar emerging into Fatimids in 909. The Fatimids, after the events of 1094, 1095, emerging into Nizaris, 
appearing at Alamoth and the revival of post-Alamoth Iran, etc. In our recent history, also, there are numerous similar examples from various struggles and migrations of the Jamaats from many parts of the world, sometimes due to oppression, sometimes due to political upheaval. I'm sure many of you are thinking about your own migrations and your own struggles, whether it were in Stenleville, Kesangani and Brazzaville in 1964, Burma or Uganda or Mozambique in early 70s. In all these examples, the Jamaats came out of their particular crisis much more stronger, much more united, much more spiritually aware and grounded, and in many cases, much better than before. Now, I'm not suggesting for a minute, my brothers and sisters, that these times were not difficult and that there were no loss of life or assets. However, our Jamaats looked at the challenges in its face with faith, with hope, under the guidance of the Imam of the time, confronted them and bounced back better. Maulana Hazar Imam Salvatullah Alehi made a comment at AKU convocation in Pakistan in 2007 when he said, quote, we must look through today's problems, through today's problems, to tomorrow's opportunities, unquote. At the heart of these examples of revival are the blessings and the guidance of the Imam, a loyal, faithful Jamaat and a united Jamaat, one family holding the hands of each other. Maulana Hazri Imam calls this the Ismaili will, which is marked with faith, courage and strength. The Imam reminded the Jamaats here in Canada recently to be ahead of the game and that we are out there to win. Now, I have set a foundation for you and based on that foundation, given where we are in the pandemic today, how can we be ahead of the game and win this battle? What do we do to ensure that the new normal is better? How can we plan better for the opening that is inshallah imminent? I propose here three important points and takeaways for our memory. First, planning. As we move forward to build a new normal, let us take all segments of the Jamaats together, from children who have suffered due to unusual school schedules, to the seniors and all segments between them. Just as we plan for our education, careers and other major life milestones, we must plan for the elders consciously and help them their entry into this normal, new normal, which we, which we want it to be better than the old normal. We need to plan for the regular practice of faith and community life, economic well-being and more importantly, mental well-being. This can only be realized first within families, with consultation, with discussion, and then within the community. So let us start this conversation about the future that is imminent for our families. The time has now arrived. So the first takeaway this evening is planning and consultation. Secondly, we must not lose the opportunity of learning from this experience of the past 15 months. What have we learned from the pandemic? Of course, we have our own personal learnings, but generally speaking, we have learned that life is fragile. Each breath is a gift from Allah. We have learned the value of clean air. We have learned about the value of Jamatkana 
and the quiet moments of prayers and contemplation of Tasbih. We have learned the value of Jamaat Khana and the community life that emerges out of Jamaat Khanas. We have missed the sound of Hey Zinda. We have learned the lesson of balanced life because life became imbalanced slightly during the pandemic. So the second point is not to miss the opportunity of learning from the pandemic. Otherwise, it will be an opportunity lost. The third point for our memory is that in the Quran Sharif, Allah grants humanity the agency, the freedom to pave their own way through reflection, tafakkur, and intellect, akal. Terms that are used in multiple derivatives within the Quran more than 800 times. That is the importance of tafakkur and akal. Thus, what we do with the lessons of pandemic as individuals, as community, as jamaat, as one big family, it is entirely up to us. It is our responsibility. In a hadith, which we all know, related by Anas bin Malik, quoted by Tirmidhi, when a Bedouin was leaving his camel untied, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam asked, why are you not tying your camel? The Bedouin said, O Prophet of Allah, I put trust in Allah. The Prophet said, tie your camel first and then what the wakal and then rely and trust in Allah. The Quran and the teachings of the Prophet are clear about human agency and our responsibility to plan for the future. If we fail to plan today, we are planning to fail for the opening which is imminent and very close. In order to ensure we build the new normal better, we as a Jamaat must plan with all segments of the Jamaats together. Hazrat Ali salam, in his teachings taught us that such kind of a thinking is part and parcel of faith using human intellect. In Surah al raad which is Surah 13, verse 11, Allah says, in Allah la yughayiru ma bikomin. God does not change the condition of any nation, any people, hatta until yughayiru ma anfusihim, until they change within, within, anfusihim, within themselves. Inshallah, as we see the light at the end of the tunnel, the Quran al Majid promises us, Fa innama al usri yusra. Indeed, there is ease after every difficulty. And Allah emphasizes this in the Quran because He repeats this ayat. So the earlier ayat is number five, and then ayat number six is, Innama al usri yusra. Indeed, there is ease after difficulty. I would invite the Jamaat to pick up the Quran tonight and read this short Meccan Surah Al-Inshara 94, Surah 94, not only for its message but for the beauty of its language and the poetry. These verses of the Quran gives us solace, they give us agency to think, to plan and indeed to look forward to a better tomorrow. We want our seniors to look forward to a better tomorrow. At the institutional dinner during Golden Jubilee, Maulana Hazri Imam reminded us of his confidence in the Jamaat, his confidence in its institutions, his confidence in the wisdom of the Jamaat, its knowledge, its willingness to help each other and to have the courage to think past crisis. So he wants us to do proactive thinking so that we think past crisis. 
be proactive. Think as one big family, as one jamaat. Let us listen to Molana Hazrimam's inspiring words. And I have to say that as I look to the future, I have a deep sense of confidence that the Jamaat around the world is finding its position in the various countries, that our institutions are beginning to have an impact on the quality of life and the quality of thought and the quality of governance in the various countries where we are living. And I say to myself, that is due to what? It's due to your wisdom, your knowledge, your willing to help each other and to have the courage to think past crises because that ultimately is the nature of what we all have to do is to think past crises and to think as one family which is what we are we are one family whether the Jamaat comes from Tajikistan or Afghanistan or Syria or East Africa it is one Jamaat in conclusion, let us remember the inspiring words of Maulana Hazri Imam, the important points that were made by Pre President Saib tonight in his address and the points we discussed on planning, reflecting on what we learned from the pandemic and our responsibility and agency today to build back a better new normal for us and our seniors. Thank you for your attention and Yali Madad. Thank you very much for teaching me and I have to think about it for my future. And of course, planning ahead is best taught through real life experiences. So now we welcome some of the Jamaati members here to share some of their stories. In the summer of 2018, my mom, Parin Ali Mamad, was diagnosed with cancer. It started in early July. She noticed some changes to her health. She started having trouble swallowing food and she began losing a little bit of weight. Um, it was summer, things were busy, but she ultimately went to the doctor who advised her to get some more tests. Um, these things of course take time and when she had a biopsy in September, it revealed a mass in her throat and she was diagnosed with esophageal cancer. This was incredibly surprising and difficult for our family. My mom was a very vibrant, energetic, passionate person. And to hear this news was, was devastating to us. We were connected with the BC Cancer Agency and in a phone call that I was able to participate in with my family, they outlined treatment options for us. And based on my mom's age, her health, and what they knew of the mass at the time, it was recommended that we proceed with radiation, which is what our family did. Well, it's been approximately about six weeks that now we are in our new digs. Our former residence was located at the Young and Eglinton area in uptown Toronto on a quiet residential street. Just to give a flavor, um, Young Street is a vibrant street. It's packed with people. There are lots of cafes, restaurants, uh, crowded patios, boutiques, bookstores, and a lot of other amenities. And for the last uh, 15 months, we have been going through COVID lockdown. Both of our children live abroad. My sister lives in Toronto, but we don't meet because of COVID. So we communicate with families and friends via phone, uh, Zoom sessions and FaceTime. And then every weekend with just two of us, we would just sit in the car and go for a drive. And invariably, we would end up at the Ismaili Center Toronto that gave us some peace and solace. This routine went on for few months. Then one day out of the blue we got an opportunity to go and see the condo near the Ismaili Centre Toronto. 
water coincidence. So on a very bright Saturday afternoon, nothing better to do, we said, wow, let's go and see this condo. It's a fun event for us. So we came here, we entered the unit, and both my husband and I fell in love. We're six siblings, uh, three of us are married, and the other three are single. Uh, my oldest brother is living abroad with his family and the rest of us are in Canada. Uh, we arrived in Canada on December 2002 after uh, living two and a half years in Pakistan. Uh, my dad came uh, with us and my mom passed away in Afghanistan uh, a long time before. I'm married and currently my father lives with me along with my two sisters and my brother who are single. Uh, my father lives into his 80s. His well-being, comfort and safety are always our top priority. And as far as our future plan goes, we had the discussions that after we're all married, our uh, dad will continue to live with us based on his desire and wishes. And as you know, within our uh, community, traditionally uh, parents uh, live with their uh, son. But our goal is that uh, we all uh, collectively uh, provide the care to our uh, dad on a rotation uh, fashion. Uh, this helps us to keep a close contact with our dad on a regular basis. Uh, this will also help reduce the burden of care. And what I mean by that is uh, that we do not want to make one or two of his children responsible. They can burn out and uh, and as a result, my dad will not receive the quality care uh, he needs. And the important aspect of this uh, decision is that each of us to provide my dad with the space where he can call it always his own home. After the first radiation treatment, we learned that the cancer had spread quite aggressively over the last couple of weeks. And we had a chance to speak to a palliative care team at our local hospital who basically outlined for us that because of the seriousness of the situation we had some difficult decisions to make as a family. Uh, my mother was in Vancouver with my father and brother and I live in Toronto but was lucky to travel to Vancouver to be there with my family and have these conversations in person and we asked my mom what her wishes were. And this was incredibly important for us because without having had that conversation, we may have made some different decisions, but it was important for her to maintain her dignity. She wasn't in a lot of pain and that was very important to her. She wanted to enjoy the quality of life that she had with the time she had left and be able to spend that with family and friends. And she was incredibly strong in our faith and didn't fear what was coming as an end, but really as the next step in her journey. So understanding all of this, we together decided that the radiation would not continue and the focus shifted to her comfort and care. Both my husband and I, once we saw the condo, we went home and we had not anticipated that we would downsize right now. We had talked about relocating and downsizing in the next two to three years time frame. So we went through a whole list of getting all the pros, all the cons, and we went back and forth and we found that there were more pros for us than cons. We had also scheduled a session with our children and they both live in different time zones. So we spoke with them and they said, maybe it is a good idea for you guys to move right now because of your age. And um, also, whatever pleases you, wherever you are happy, that's what matters in the end. We will support you. For providing and maintaining quality of life, we believe that living with his adult children not only provides him with a better care, but also provides him with opportunity for life, long family and social 
interactions. His needs are so different from 20 to 30 years back. When he was an adult, he valued working and earning money, but now he loves to socialize and attend parties at all the time. Therefore, we believe that if he spent time with his children and grandchildren, uh, this can fulfill his social needs as well as benefit his physical, mental, and emotional health. For example, my dad loves to get ready to go to places or visit the family member. So when each of us takes a turn to pick him up uh, and when he is received with warmth by his uh, children's family on a weekly or monthly basis, it would give him a little extra feeling of joy. That's what we believe. For our family, we were incredibly fortunate to be able to have these conversations together in person and be there for each other during this difficult time as we talked to different medical professionals and we asked our questions. It really helped us ensure that we were moving forward together in a way that we all felt really comfortable with and that was and that was in line with my mom's wishes. Once the decision was made to no longer continue radiation, we were offered a spot at the palliative care unit in our local hospital. We didn't have much experience directly with palliative care, but we were incredibly fortunate to be surrounded by a team of health professionals who were incredibly compassionate, who were focused on my mom's care, who were empathetic, who were available to talk to us and answer our questions and really take care of my mom in a way that was led by her wishes. I was lucky as well because I got to stay in the same room with my mom overnight. And so our family really got to spend a lot of quality time together and benefit from that time that we did have with my mom. So there were four key factors that we went through. Number one, was downsizing from a big house to a condo that will allow us to manage the smaller space and maintain that smaller space better. Number two, um, our faith. We want to focus on the spiritual aspect of our life and inshallah, we would like to be more regular in Jamaat Khana. Number three, it is very important for us that we have all these amenities. We have natural trails around here. There are lots of other parks which we haven't yet explored. Um, we were within close proximity to the botanical gardens, easy access to shopping, dining, um, we have grocery store within walking distance. There are medical facilities. Number four, it's the environment of communal and social interaction. This is one of the fundamental principles of positive aging, and it helps prevent mental and physical health challenges. As I reflect back on the experience we had and what we took away from it, I think there were several things that were very important. The ability for us to have meaningful conversations as a family, to be able to understand my mom's wishes and really do everything in our power to help see them through. The time that we had to get our family's affairs in order was also really important. And finally, the strength that my mom had in our faith until the end that helped the people around her find strength as well. Absolutely, it uh, not only strengthened our bonds as siblings and grown uh, children with our uh, father, but also reminded us of our responsibilities of how to return him the life sacrifices that he made as a great father for his children. One of the things that really helped our family through this time was the energy that came from my mom herself. She was able to maintain a positive disposition. She was thankful and expressed gratitude, reminded us to do the same. She would ask people to wish her a happy journey. 
that's how firmly she was uh, rooted in our faith. And all of those things really helped us get through this experience together and look back in a way that we felt proud of as a family, as difficult as it was in the moment. Well, these stories were absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for sharing them with us. Now, I know planning for the future is a difficult conversation to have, and it's one that I haven't really had a lot, but I do know that 35 years ago, Nani, you made a big decision with Nana. Yes, I made, we made a decision to stay near Kane. So if we can't drive the car, we can go walking to Kane, and it was very, very good thing to do. And mom, have you and dad made some decisions over the years planning for your future? Uh, we have. Uh, so, of course, we've done our wills, um, we've done our powers of attorney, we've also done our representation agreements recently. But I think more on a practical basis, um, the home that we moved into, we ensured that it had a bedroom and a bathroom on the main level. So in the future, if we're not able to do stairs, uh, we can still remain in our home. Yeah, very smart. But I know that these are difficult conversations to have on a deep level with family members. So that's why we're very excited, as I mentioned earlier, to bring in Kahir Lalji to talk a bit about that tool that will allow you to facilitate these conversations. So I did speak with him a little bit earlier this week. Kahir, it's an absolute honor to have you here today, an old friend, but a brilliant individual who is here to share so much with us Really, really excited to have you here with us. Well, you know, I wanna, I wanna get you right away to kick off and tell us a bit about this really interesting toolkit online that you've been working with the Jamathi Institutions and United Way to put together. Thank you, Zara, for, for your kind words. It's a really exciting initiative, the Aging in Place Toolkit. And it has come from an understanding that families, our loved ones, our care, our, the ones that we care for, as we age throughout life, really would benefit from some pre-planning, some a proactive approach to ensure that 10, 15 years down the road, we are able to live a good quality of life. And the Aging in Place Toolkit, which was created in 2015, um, has now been updated uh, so that we're able to facilitate conversations amongst ourselves and our loved ones to better prepare for what later life may have to offer. Now you say it allows you to look into the next 10 to 15 years. So the next thing that it really sparks in my mind is I'm so lucky I've got two parents. I want to know how to take care of them. And I imagine that's a question that many people in their thirties like me may be thinking about as well. My parents are still out there working. I'm not really thinking about them aging. Um, but I think this, this is kind of that reality check where we probably need to start thinking about that. So talk to me a bit about how this toolkit can kind of facilitate a safe and open type of conversation to happen at home. Look, Zara, these conversations are, are tricky to have. We all are so busy in, in our day-to-day -day lives that we often don't have an opp opportunity to sit back, to reflect, and to have these open, sometimes difficult conversations, whether it has to do with future financial situations, whether it has to do with future transportation. Do I want to attend Jamaat Khanna regularly as I age? Who do I want to live close to when I age? How will my, my mobility, my access to resources change? And so these are all key fundamental pieces that this toolkit aims to inspire conversation about. So, you know, you've really, you've brought so much knowledge to all of us. You've talked about this toolkit. You've talked about the difficulty of having this conversation and how this will hopefully help with that. Now, paint me a bit of a real life picture. I want you to perhaps paint something as far as we're sitting down, we're talking to mom and papa, we're talking to mom and dad, perhaps our younger sister, paint that picture for me of how this tool can be used in a real life situation. There's so many opportunities to engage in conversations. This toolkit is based on nine different domains. One's health, one's home, one's community, one's access to transportation, etc. And all of us, all of our lives will be impacted differently by each of these aspects of our life. This really is an opportunity to have a conversation over dinner, over a cup of chai, uh, as well as a family unit 
to, to discuss what the future plans would be. We know advanced care planning is also uh, one area that we know if pre-planning is not done, it can lead to crises. And so this really is an opportunity to have conversations around where we see ourselves in terms of our quality of life down the road, but also what steps we need to take now. Maybe we need to have a few healthier meals each week. Maybe we need to be a little bit more active. Maybe we need to go and see our healthcare provider, the healthcare provider that we've been delaying for the last year or fifth or two years. And so it's meant to inspire conversation, to facilitate dialogue, to create personal action plans, which are really relative to each individual and to inspire action now. Now, Kai here, before I let you go, the very obvious question, quickly tell me where I can actually find this toolkit. You can find this toolkit at www.agingandplaceplan.ca. All right, I'll make sure to save that website. Thank you so much, Kai, here for all of your hard work on this. And I'm really, really excited to actually sit down with my entire family, all three, maybe even four generations, to discuss, to learn, and to figure out our future. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Zara. Thank you so much, Kai here. It was absolutely enlightening chatting with you. I know my family learned a lot and I'm sure many other family members out there did as well. So anyone who's hoping to learn a little bit more about this tool, feel free to head over to agingandplaceplan.ca. Now, Nani, I think it's your favorite time coming up. Oh, it's a time for musical expression. It's as the mother of a journalist, it's been a true honor to be on this side of the camera. I actually feel like it's a parents to work day today. <laughs> yeah, this was absolutely so much fun for me. I got to have the two most important people in my life. I hope you were sitting with some of the most important ones in your life. Thank you so much and have a wonderful week. Stay safe. Yali <laughs> madad.
آید محرم راز می آید سب سب ناز می آید محرم راز می آید هستی پر دردا